is going on everybody it's mr uzi here and this video is all about upgrading your computer in the most efficient way possible we're going to go from the cheapest most effective way of upgrading your computer to the more expensive maybe not as effective in upgrading your computer and well let's get started number one on the list is an ssd Putting an SSD in your system is not only easy, it's fairly cheap, and it has the most noticeable difference in performance on your computer. You can load things faster, your computer will boot faster, and even shut down faster, which is actually quite annoying when your computer doesn't shut down when you want it to and it takes minutes or something like that. But an SSD is generally faster than a mechanical hard drive. Throwing one of these in your system and making it your dedicated boot drive can definitely increase the performance of your computer. And you can still keep your old mechanical hard drive for mass storage because SSDs, while they're really fast and fairly cheap, the cost per gigabyte is significantly more than a hard drive. So it's not really meant for mass storage. So hard drives are still kind of better in that area. Number two on the list is something that you may not really think to upgrade. Um, it doesn't really get upgraded a whole lot because computers tend to stay on the same type of this uh, for a pretty long time and that is RAM. Now I currently have 16 gigs of my desktop behind me and I upgraded from eight or from four and then I upgraded to eight and then I upgraded to 16 because I found that Google Chrome likes to eat up a ton of RAM and I like to keep a lot of tabs open. At any given time I can have 10 or 15 to maybe even 30 or 40 tabs open on Chrome and it really does take a hit on the memory. You know what? Let me, I have my computer. You know what, we're going behind the scenes with this one. Unplug that, take the camera out of there, and go, all right, let's go. We're gonna go behind the scenes here. So, we're gonna go behind to the computer, ow, to the computer, and I'm gonna show you what, what we're working with with RAM usage here. So let's go, there's the desktop. This is what I was most recently searching, you know, PCI lanes, uh, bandwidth, and stuff like that. Let's count how many tabs we have. Oh, let's move these out of the way. Uh, let's count how many tabs I open. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 20. I'm out of breath. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. 39 tabs are open right now. 39 tabs on Google Chrome and this is just a normal day like I'm not even like doing homework or researching anything really so now let's just open up what the RAM usage is I have I pretty much always have task manager open because I'm always looking at the RAM 30 look at that 34 percent let's get that focus 34 percent RAM usage and I mean you can look down at the bottom I really don't have a whole lot of, I mean, Steam's downloading something, uh, Catalyst Control Center, Samsung, like, there's really, Chrome is the only thing that's running right now. That equates to, let's go to the performance tab, 5.6 gigs of usage right now. That's what we're working with, with my general, this is like a light workload for me. Um, if you, <laughs> You see my phone, let's not even go into that. Chrome started, it stopped counting how many tabs I had open and just put a smiley face. Um, but yeah, this is what we're working with right now. So I have 16 gigs of RAM and 5.6 of it, let's get that focused in there. 5.6, 5.5 gigs is just Chrome. Now, if I wanted to render something in Premiere or something in no, After Effects, we'll just eat that all up. But Premiere, this is going to go up anywhere to maybe 11, 12. I think I've hit it, hit 90% usage with Chrome, depending on how long the video was. After Effects just eats through RAM. So if, if your computer is a little slow, check the RAM usage. You may, if you're like me and you open up a ton of tabs on Chrome or any web, web browser for, for that matter, your RAM may be what's slowing down the computer and maybe getting another stick of 8 gigs or maybe just a, maybe even a four gig stick will help you out. Um, and another thing is to make sure to check your motherboard and make sure that uh, your RAM is in the correct slots so that it can actually run in dual channel versus single channel. They're not it's not really too much of a performance difference, but it's one of those things. Just just do it. It's probably it's better. It's not worse. But yeah, this is just a little behind the scenes. Um, but anyway, let's just get back to the normal video because this camera's kind of heavy. It's like I'm just kidding. But anyway, so getting more RAM 
can not only help your computer to not slow down as much, but you can also uh, not have to worry about running out of RAM. Say you're uh, playing a game and you're listening to a live stream in the background or you're rendering something and you wanted to watch a video. You won't have that uh, conflict of having too much RAM used and not enough for your computer to actually run smoothly. And RAM prices have also come down. Um, DDR4 is out, but it is not necessarily the most cost-effective way to speed up your computer because it involves a new motherboard and new CPU. But DDR3 is perfectly fine and it's getting cheaper. So getting a stick of maybe eight more gigs or four more gigs of DDR3 RAM is a great way to speed up your computer for not a whole lot of money. All right, now we are getting into territory that is very expensive. And I'm talking about raw processing power, whether that be GPUs or CPUs. Let's start off with GPUs. GPUs and CPUs are kind of in the same place on this list because depending on what you do, you may need to upgrade one and not the other or vice versa. So with GPUs, if you're gaming, this is what you upgrade first. Your CPU, you may have a dual core or a triple core or a quad core or whatever, and your, your games just aren't running as fast as you think, and you may have a CPU bottleneck, um, but chances are if your computer or CPU is made within the past three or four years, it's probably not your CPU, it's probably your GPU. Getting a new GPU is a great way to increase frame rates and minimum frame rates when you're playing your favorite games, your AAA titles, your 3D games, multiplayer, all that stuff is dependent on the GPU. Now, if you wanna upgrade your GPU, it is gonna cost you significantly more than an SSD or a stick of RAM. Getting something like a 970 or a 960 from Nvidia can be anywhere from 200 to 350 bucks. On the AMD side, getting anywhere from an R9 280 to an R9 290 or 290X can be anywhere from 170 to about 300 bucks. So there's a lot of money that's going to be spent on a GPU, but if you wanna play at 1440p, 1600p, uh, 1080p with super sampling, or even 4K, if, you're, if you have a 4K monitor, you're gonna to wanna to upgrade your GPU first to see whether or not your GPU can handle it, because in most cases, that's going to be the bottleneck in gaming. Now, switching gears over to CPUs, if you just need raw processing power in rendering, uh, coding, compiling, all that stuff. Uh, on AMD side, you can go for the FX line, which is really the top of the line CPUs. They've been so for the past three or four years now. Or on Intel side, you have your general i3s, i5s, and i7s. i5s are ten, tend to be the more popular because games aren't taking uh, advantage of more cores and hyper-threading doesn't really help games run any faster. So if you're gaming specifically, get an i5 and then upgrade your GPU as much as you need and that i5 should last you quite a long time. If you're into more rendering, get an i7 and you should be good for a long time unless you just really need that extra 10% uh, in performance. Um, if you're going on AMD side, the 8350 is really good for rendering. It's not as fast in gaming as the i5, but in most cases, it probably won't be any noticeable difference. Mostly in benchmarks is where you're going to see the difference between the CPUs. And also AMD CPUs are significantly cheaper than Intel's, so there's also that benefit as well. Now, there's my list. This is kind of the scheme or the uh, kind of a way that I upgraded my computer. I upgraded this to the SSD, then to the RAM, and then to the GPU. And then the CPU is what's going to come next. And yes, that is a lot of money. That's why you save the best for last. Now, let me know what you guys think. Is this what you followed or is there a different method of upgrading that you follow um, that you have done in the past that's worked for you? This is just my way, but I think that this is the best way to upgrade your computer efficiently and not have to buy a brand new computer unless you want to. You can build a brand new computer if you want. But this is my way of saying you don't have to buy a brand new computer. You can upgrade piece by piece efficiently and you can get the same end result of a computer that's snappy. You can still do everything that you want it to in decent time and fast enough. So that's really all I have to say. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't hit the thumbs down button, also leave down below what's your uh, method of upgrading. Just give me a short list, one to four or five of what you would upgrade 
and why you chose it. I just want, I'm just a little curious about how people upgrade their computers. Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.